Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's talk about money. More specifically, how we process money and how the inflow of money comes in and how that hits different applications and then turns into data so we understand whether or not we lost money or made money any particular month or given any particular period. Now, this is something that came up when me and Brett the other day did a video, which I'll leave linked down below, talking about profit loss and, you know, whether you're shuffling money or making money. But of course, without the tools to really dive into and dissect all those transactions, you don't really know that answer. And me being an open source advocate, people had asked, are there some open source tools you're using for that? And yes, I am. Now, this is not saying these are absolutely the tools for you. Maybe the process, though, will help inspire what tools fit better into your business. Business is, well, diverse and not everything is for everybody. I found a flow that works for me. This is what we're doing now. It's not what we've always done. And there's going to be a time in the future when we're doing something different as well. But this, at least, as long as you have a guideline of what you're doing in the process, you could always swap out different applications that may fit. So sometimes I like to think about it from a concept, and maybe this concept will help some of you that are starting out think about how you're going to process money and how you're going to take those transactions so you can work with and i do highly recommend an outside accounting firm working with an outside accounting firm and un having them understand your process so they can integrate within it i will do a short disclaimer here and that disclaimer is really simple please follow whatever regulatory laws are in the region and areas you're in this is not any type of legal advice and i can guarantee one thing though no good defense i've ever seen started with but this guy on youtube was saying so so uh, yeah, go ahead and talk to someone about legal advice as far as how you process your accounting. It's why we use an outside accounting firm. And I'll cover that little aspect of what we do internally versus what they do in this topic as well. And when I say process and flow, I do mean a flow chart. That's how we're going to explain this. Now, this is diagrams.net. Leave a link down below to this tool. Everyone always asks what tool you're using. It's the one down in the links. And we call this the money ingress process. First, let's cover something. What do I do and how do I make money? That's an important aspect for any business. And hopefully you are past the part of understanding what you do to make money because this is about processing it. But what we do here is we bring in money via managed service provisioning contracts that we have. So those are recurring recurring revenue contracts where we are paid to maintain computers and technology for other companies outside IT services that is processed through Invoice Ninja. We do a lot of project work. Someone says, hey, I'd like you to do this wiring project or we'd like you to upgrade these servers. That's also work we do where we quote it and bid it and we use Invoice Ninja for that. I've got plenty of videos I'll link down below on Invoice Ninja. It's all based on V4 Invoice Ninja. V5 is out. We have not migrated to it yet. That's coming soon uh, as they only came out a little bit earlier this year but you can still keep using v4 but if you're starting out today invoice ninja v5 is available and yeah like i said i got links down below to the invoice ninja videos i've done still a great product i'm going to get to v5 soon consulting bookings that's another way we make money this is the booking links as we call them where people just want some one-off consulting with us there's a hire us button on our website that's where it takes you to is that beginning of that process where we send out a booking link pretty simple that's one of the income methods uh, we're specifically right now in december of 2021 using you can book me uh, that's what accounts to that now both of these tools consulting bookings and invoice ninja Invoice Ninja connects to multiple, but among the things it's connected to is Stripe. So we use Stripe for our backend payments. Also for contract, as I said, MSP or IT contracts that are on recurring. If people want to pay us with not just credit card, but ACH, that's another option. That's also tied into Stripe. So that goes invoice. They choose the payment method. They can choose Stripe. Secondary payment method they could choose is PayPal. Invoice Ninja allows you to have more than one payment processor available in it. So that's a really cool feature of it. The consulting bookings have a tie-in with Stripe. So same thing. Both of these inflows of money that come in both hit Stripe. Then we have YouTube AdSense. Hey, I'm a YouTuber who does monetize this channel. So that is money that comes in there. Affiliate commissions. There's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products we talk about on this channel. I've you know, said that plenty of times. That's where that money ends up going. Eventually, a lot of those affiliate payments, not all of them, but a lot of them will tie to bank accounts. The other side over here is affiliate payments do come into my PayPal account. This, some companies prefer to pay one way, some pay the other. Make it easy for them, whichever works for them. Any other income, any other random reasons I get money for one-off things I do, uh, that all just lands into a bank account. And it's anything I do as Lawrence Technologies, which includes all kinds of weird one-off consulting jobs I've done where people just want to 
buy time from me. That happens as well. Uh, most of the time, we'll send them an invoice to your invoice ninja, but occasionally some companies have different structures where they just want to write a check to uh, buy my services and not like at a normal hourly rate. Um, but that's really any other income that just calls, that's why it's called that. So that's other ways we make money. And then other people just, okay, hey, Tom, can we just pay, pay you some money? Yes, we can. I've had people that literally just want to say thank you with some money. Thank you for all the people that have said thank you with money because, hey, that's great. And that comes right to PayPal as well. We actually get a button on our website uh, under our affiliate links for people that said, can I just send you money? It's odd that enough people ask for that. that that's why that's there. Um, I don't beg for money, but people that just want to say thank you, it's a great way to say thank you. I'm just I'm throwing it out here. <laughs> I didn't mind that. All right. Transfers between these accounts do occur back and forth. That's definitely happening. And then downloading of monthly data. That is once a month every 30 days at the end of a bank cycle uh i download that month's account and this is how we start processing that data now it's just a simple qif download most any bank account no matter what bank you use we've switched banks a couple times they pretty much all have a qif download uh, paypal supports it as well but other ones will support csv so i threw that on there but right now our banks that we've used in paypal have both have uh, CSV. There was actually a bug for a little while in the PayPal's QIF download, and I had to download it as CSV. Uh, they seem to have fixed that. That happened about a year ago. But either way, both of those land in a tool called K My Money. Now, I've got an old video I did on this. It really hasn't changed much. This is a cross platform application, kmymoney.org, I think is the website. I'll leave the absolute link down below to the website if you're interested in looking at product we say cross platform windows mac linux and pretty easy program it's not nearly as robust as something like quickbooks it does not do any invoicing for us this is simply ledger transactions so we're trying to sort out all the ledger transactions that have come in all the outgoing money and all the incoming money because while all of this is income there are still money that goes out and we track in ledgers in terms of percentage all in k my money un to understand that most of the payments that go out it's not like there's so many we buy parts off amazon and a few other vendors uh so this is where that categorization really comes in so we're not tracking it like a normal accounts payable we just pay the bills as they come in wire the money because yes some companies prefer wire transfer and yes it's still using checks here in 2021 is just how some companies like to receive money. I just, I can't really, I don't know. We're not going to go there. Uh, it always seems to surprise all my friends in Europe going, really, you write checks a lot? Sure do. It's a popular thing here in the United States, but all of that data is still coming out of the bank account. And it's how we build the ledger for understanding all the outgoing money that left here. So while all these mention income for flow of data, any of the money that flowed out also, of course, came out of the bank. And from doing that, we have this QIF file that we go in here. Now, we have to take all the transactions. And the good news is about KMI Money, once you learn how to use it, you can tune it so the transactions line up because it knows that every time I've bought something on Amazon or any time I purchase from a consistently the same place where like let's say my insurance payments which actually do go out via uh, normal ach it knows that as a category it has a ledger category that gets assigned to that so that's all fine with k my money so the majority of the transactions actually what they refer to as auto match and the auto matching of all of this works really well so i don't spend too much time downloading and parsing all the data my full audit of it roughly takes me an hour and a half a month to audit all of it i look at the bank account in between but as far as the transaction line by line audit that's all done right here so once i have that it's lined up then to the profit and loss statement so that's pretty easy to produce once you know all the transactions and then i create a spreadsheet that's a categorized transaction list and all it is is the profit and loss statement but instead of being summarized into a series of ledger categories it's simply broke out into just every single transaction and what ledger i assume they belong to if there's questions about those transactions this is where it gets sent over to an outside accounting firm we've been using them for a very long time they do very well on corporate accounting we send them all the data plus our bank statement and then they do a secondary audit. This is something I'm paying for on a recurring basis where they go through each month and process all those transactions. They look at what I have on my categorized transactions. They make sure all those same transactions show up on each one of the statements, that everything is correct, that there was no questionable things, that I didn't try to expense something that didn't make any sense to put it in that particular category. They 
then I call it blessing of the books or however you want to refer to it. They look at all of it and summarize it and say, yes, this is fine. And then they have to do a couple more steps. This is the part I always recommend using a third party who understands the complexities of whatever jurisdiction you're in. And in the US, there's a series of federal and state tax laws that you have to comply with. So they update the uh, files for the government, send out all the tax payments to the appropriate authorities that need them because they also are processing my payroll. So they'll send out the appropriate payroll taxes and everything related to those because that's how we do it here in the U.S. And then they file all of the government forms at the federal level as well, whatever's needed, sales tax, etc., all those little detailed forms. And then they inform me how much I have to pay each month in taxes, uh, which it is what it is. They also update my balance sheet. Now, I'm not going to get into that because it goes off topic and it's probably not something I'm the best to explain. But the balance sheet essentially looks at the assets of the company and determines what's on its balance sheet, what assets it's owed, or what money you may owe if you have loans or anything like that, or your shareholder equity position. But they maintain all of that. They keep very good records of it. So anytime I need to have a conversation, my accountant has been watching all the inflows of money and outflows of money and anything I owe, and we can have any intelligent discussion on it. It's one of the reasons I think it's important. This is done monthly because they want to keep in line with the accountant because you got to talk about strategies. Because if you show a series of too many profits, you can say, all right, should we rebalance what you're spending in certain areas? Or maybe it's time to give out uh, more payroll, more raises because you have to balance what you'll end up owing in taxes on things. It's kind of a nuanced dance of back and forth. There's not like an exact formula that works for everyone, but it's something you're always trying to look ahead and discuss because you're not actually taxed on the total amount your business does. You're taxed on what's left over in profit. And it's not bad to have profit, but it's a matter of balancing it. Should I have too much profit here or should I then also give everybody a raise? But if I give everybody a raise and I don't continue that trend, of making more money, you'll end up being at a deficit. So it's a kind of a constant balance. It's constantly being evaluated uh, it, as it should be at any company. And when companies lose track of this or misjudge where the balance is going, this is what causes companies to go out of business. And then from here, the uh, online outside accounting firm, they actually have all the payroll information. So they produce all the payroll checks and uh, I say checks, it could be wired into their bank account, but it's the payroll processing. They take it out of the account, send it to the staff. They take out the tax checks. This is all the egress of money and then text, debit, PayPal payments, ACH wire, ACH payments, uh, American Express cards and different funds that we have externally is just how the money egress is pretty simple, but it's still part of all the transactions that would then be downloaded and keeps the kind of cycle going. Now, depending on where you are, if you're starting out a business, this may seem a little bit complex, but it's not that complicated. If you're a much larger company than me, then you're going, that's not enough because there's an entire team of people at larger companies. And I used to work in corporate and we had so many people in accounting there's so many moving parts to process. But whether or not you decide to use any of the tools I mentioned, like Invoice Ninja, Invoice Ninja and KMI Money, or use Stripe as your back end, or any one of the other competing companies out there that offers you know, processing services, really comes down to you. Some people just choose to keep it all with their bank. Stripe, to me, was just an easier integration. Same thing with Invoice Ninja. We kind of had this homebrewed system that was, well, looking back, very terrible and not the best. But using Invoice Ninja has been great because it's really easy to use. It's easy for my clients to see everything. Like I said, at videos down below. Uh, that's what we're using for now. Like I said, there could be some time in the future where I see myself using something different. But for now, these are the tools that we use. And hopefully the process makes you think a little bit about how the money should be flowing in and out of your company. Like I said, it's all different stages. It really starts with process. That way you can help evaluate what software you think works for you. And once you have the process, changing out the software in that process is a less of a big deal. That way you're always thinking about the transactions. And please take my advice on finding a good outside accounting firm because not filing any of those government things that I don't even know all the names of. I just know how much I spend on it um, and keeping up with the nuances of payroll changes. Ah, don't get behind on that. I've got friends who have gotten in tax trouble, tried to save money. And how many people work in tech uh, watching this channel also knew someone who tried to save money and uh, not hire a proper technician to do something in a disaster. I really feel accounting is the same way. It's another complex topic and uh, working internally though, so you have an understanding of it of it and your outside accounting firm has stand of it will bring you, I think, to a happier middle. All right. Leave your comments and thoughts down below or have a more in-depth discussion over in the forums. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. 
If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.